What is the most disturbing thing someone has confessed to you? A friend of mine OD'd a few years back on OxyContin. One drunken night, while reminiscing about him, a mutual friend asked me if I remembered the time that they told me of an accident that the two of them had witnessed, where they saw one of the drivers die. I remembered and asked him why. He then broke down and told me that our dead friend ran to see the man dying and took his wedding ring. He said that the man's body was crushed and couldn't do anything. He could only just look at him while he stole his ring and that the man looked so scared. My friend said that he didn't know what to do and that it was over with so fast that he just ran away with my other friend after it was over. Both of them were severe drug addicts, but I never would have thought that they could be so callous. I considered both of these guys to be like my brothers. I grew up with them and trusted them completely. I will never trust a drug addict again. In a drunken confession, an ex told me that he thought he hit and killed a homeless man on his way home from a party in his early 20s. He said he kept going out of fear because he'd been drinking and didn't want to get in trouble. He told me he even drove straight to a car wash to wash off his truck. He said he never did hear or see anything about it on the news, so he wasn't sure. A former friend of mine confessed that she lied about being raped twice. Once was to get herself out of trouble with her parents, and the second resulted in the guy being kicked out of school and all kinds of other terrible repercussions. She confessed that she did it because she couldn't stand him. He'd been attracted to her for some time. And instead of telling him to just leave her alone, she figured ruining his life would get the job done just fine. I knew this crazy guy in college who claimed he'd murdered a group of people. He claimed that late one night, he was driving down the highway and just ran somebody off the road just to see if he could. Their car hit a tree at 70 miles per hour and the family of five all died. Usually I'd assume this guy was full of shit, but he did such sociopathic stuff throughout that year, I started to wonder if it was true. Like, he tormented this one girl by telling her she was a shit person who should commit suicide for so long she actually quit school. And he had a girlfriend fly 1,500 miles to visit, then dumped her when she showed up at the airport and just left her there. Dude wasn't right, so maybe he did it. I don't have proof. My best friend was kidnapped, raped, and left in the woods when she was five. I always knew something bad had happened to her when she was young because of comments made from her family and because of things she freaked out about. After being at her house when her parents were fighting with her grandparents about it, blaming each other like they do often, she took me in the room and told me everything. It was fucking crazy to hear. And the weird thing is, I had heard stories like, a long time ago a girl was kidnapped around here. Never realized it was the person I spent 90% of my time with. I had a girlfriend back in my first year of college that confessed to me that she had been raped as a little girl by her stepdad. She never really told me specific details because, according to her, it felt like she was asleep when it happened. He knocked her out unconscious. And then she woke up in the floor several feet away from the bed. She got really emotional as she was telling me this and I hugged her really hard. After that day, she was a different person. I met a hobo in Sonora that told me he rolled other hobos off the moving train when they were sleeping to steal their shit. He told me he was the killer of the train. I don't speak Spanish very well, so we had a translator, and he didn't miss a beat when he was translating it. My heart sank as the words came out of his mouth. It was fucking surreal. I gave him a couple cigarettes and got the fuck out of there. A coworker I barely know approached me one Friday morning to ask about my weekend plans. Then, casually told me his wife had killed herself with a pistol and he was the one that found her. I didn't know what else to say, so I told him my weekend plans, spending time with my wife and newborn son. He got a really odd expression on his face and told me to enjoy it because you never know when it's going to end. There was this guy I met on one of those internet chat rooms several years back. I was terribly lonely and he seemed decent enough, so we met up. He gave off quite a creepy vibe, not in a way that made me fear for my safety, but it's more like there was something off about him. Didn't think too much about it then. So we went for a drive and had an okay time. Nothing in the least remarkable. We talked over the phone a couple times in the next two weeks. I was teaching preschool, and he seemed really interested in my work with my kids. None of my friends were interested in what I do at work, so I was initially chuffed at the opportunity to talk about my class. That is, until it started getting a little odd. He began to steer almost every conversation in the direction of my kids. I was getting terribly uncomfortable and stopped talking about them. 
I guess he started fretting that his source of kitty anecdotes was running dry, so he stopped with the what did you teach today line of questioning and came right out, asking really inappropriate questions about whether the girls in my class would sit with their legs closed, and if they don't, what kind of panties they wear. I told him I wasn't interested in talking to him any longer and that he should perhaps seek help. That's when he told me that he's sexually interested in children, and I quote, between two to eight years, and he's especially interested in seeing them in sexy G-strings. I questioned further, and he told me that he gets his pictures and videos from IRC, and that once, he helped his colleague look after his five-year-old. Apparently, he blindfolded the kid, felt her up, and stuffed his dick into her mouth. He was disgustingly explicit. I called the cops, but sadly, nothing much came out of it. I guess he talked his way out. Worked in a pharmacy. Guy comes in with what looks like healed scars, but these scars cover most of his visible body. He tells me never to sell him Sudafed again. His house blew up and nearly killed him. Shocked me a bit, but when I told my pharmacist, she just laughed and said he deserved it. That they ate cat food as a family. They were creepy customers at CVS that were regulars when I worked there as a teenager. Once, I asked about their cat to be nice, since they were always buying tons of cat food. They answered nonchalantly that they didn't have any cats, and that they ate the cat food themselves. The son who was in his mid-twenties referred to himself as absolutely sexy, and had t-shirts, hats, etc. with this on it. Spoiler alert, he was not absolutely sexy by any means. My friend was going through a rough time. His mom had just died, and he was having these weird seizures. He would be unconscious, but conscious in a weird way. He'd black out, but he'd still be able to function, sort of. Like a zombie, I guess. They were terrifying to witness. Witnessed a lot. Doctors never figured out what was wrong. He confided to me that he was suicidal, and had made attempts on his life that had either failed or he'd gotten cold feet. For example, downed a load of pills, tried drowning himself, etc. One time, it was the end of lunch at school. Yep, we were in year 10, so roughly 15. And I noticed him heading off towards some bushes that were opposite the main school building. Having a bit of a gut lurch, I ran over to him and asked him why he was going the wrong way. He fought with me a bit to just let him skip, but I refused, and, being a stubborn ass, he knew I wouldn't give up and came with me to class. He told me later that he had a coil of thin blue rope under his jumper and was planning on hanging himself then and there. Can't stand thinking about what would have happened if I hadn't spotted him through the crowds. Was playing online NHL or something, and I forgot how it came up, but some kid told me he fucked his dog in the ass regularly. The bestiality was fucked, but I know it's a thing. What was really weird is how normal he thought it was. Like, him and his friends would take turns, and apparently the dog was just used to it and would sit there and enjoy it? I turned my mic off for the rest of that game. I was working in-home health and was taking care of a lovely, gracious older woman. We got close. She told me she had married at 13 to a much older man to get away from her family. She had married him one day after meeting him, and I commented that I thought that was a little sudden. She then said she had to. Her father was going to kill her. Two nights before, her drunken father and friends were sitting around a bonfire, and her two-year-old sister wandered around them. They started kicking the child back and forth joking around, and she fell into the fire and burned to death. This was in dirt poor country, and the child probably didn't even have a birth certificate. She said she tried to get the baby out of the fire, but couldn't, and ran away later because they thought she would turn them in. They were going to kill her. She was in her 80s when she told me this. I know she didn't do anything wrong. She was confessing her guilt about not being able to do anything. The man married her in order to help her get away. They were married for over 60 years until he died. He worked as some kind of official for the government, and they traveled around the world, had children, and a wonderful life. But she carried that guilt to her grave, even though it wasn't justified. She never went back to visit her family. I was guest preaching at a church in East Peoria, Illinois. I had preached here a handful of times before and knew the people somewhat. This Sunday night, there was someone I'd never seen before. He was a young guy in his 20s with long, blonde hair. He seemed out of place by his actions. For example, he genuflected before he sat down. But this was a Southern Baptist church. But whatever, I was just glad he was there. After the service, one of the deacons stood up and said, Any announcements for the coming week? 
The blonde guy says, I'd like to talk to Brother Couch Jitsu. This was weird because I had preached probably 15 to 20 times around the area and nobody had wanted any one-on-one -on -one time. But I thought, maybe I said something that resonated with him. We go back into the pastor's office and sit down. I ask him what's up. He says, well, I came here tonight to confess. I stopped him there. I said, this is a Baptist church. I'd be happy to talk to you, but we don't believe or practice confession. I'm not even a pastor. I'm a young guy that's a guest preacher. He said he understood and wanted to continue. As we talked, he told me lots of things, like he was going to become a professional wrestler and other miscellaneous things. He then said, I need to confess to you that I was in OSF, a local hospital, last year. Okay. I was there because I thought I was Jesus Christ. Okay, um... It's okay. I know now that I'm not him. Well, that's... That's good. Yeah, I'm one of the final prophets from the book of Revelation. Blank stare. I'm one of them, and my cousin is the other witness. I don't remember much more at that point. It was weird and disturbing. We wrapped up the conversation, and he thanked me for my time. I went out into the sanctuary, grabbed my wife, and we sped down the bluff back to our neighboring town. I kept looking in the rearview mirror as it felt like a bad horror movie. She asked what was wrong. I told her. She replied, Oh, he's probably just high. 